This video will demonstrate how to display or query by wetland type with the Fort Kent Wetlands data layer. If we right click, open attribute table. This takes us to the spreadsheet or the attribute table where every one of these rows corresponds to one polygon feature within this data layer. If we zoom to, that's the one. Right click here, zoom to layer, zooms us out to the whole thing. This clear selected features, we want to click that so we're again acting on the entire layer. We see wetland type is the attribute that t tells us what this wetland is. Freshwater emergent, freshwater forested, lakes, ponds, and rivers. Close the attribute table. Right click on Fort Kent Wetlands, Properties. Go to Tab, Symbology, Show, Categories, Value Field, Wetland Type. Remember that's the one that tells us what everything is. Add all values. Uncheck all other values. Count zero means there's nothing in this category. Uncheck. Clicking on this color swatch here twice will produce the symbol selector. We can select from here or we can edit the symbol, choose markers, pictures, don't do that, line fill. But we're going to use lake for lakes, ponds, and rivers. And I'm going to use a green for both of the other kinds of wetlands. OK. And now we're displaying lakes, ponds, and rivers using blue, and the other kinds of wetlands as green. You can use that to zoom in on any of these locations. And say we want to select just the rivers and do a buffer on them. Right click, open attribute table, and here we have select by attributes. Click, double click wetland type equals get unique values and riverine or rivers. Double click. We have now constructed a query that says select those features where the wetland type equals river. If the wetland type does not equal river, it will not be selected. If it does, it will. Okay, so if we bring this to where we can see it, we have selected 167 out of the 812 features. If I now close my attribute table, we can see all of the selected features are highlighted in blue. Now, if we do any kind of geoprocessing operation, it will act only upon these selected layers. Geoprocessing buffer. Input feature is the wetlands. Units feet. And we're going to say the town of Fort Kent wants a 250 foot buffer on every river. That's not true, but we're going to do that for right now because we're not differentiating between the larger rivers and the smaller rivers. So, dissolve type we want to set to all. And that's going to mean where these two buffers come together off the St. John and this little stream, it will create one buffer rather than two with a bunch of lines overlapping. Okay. And you get this dialog box saying it's completed. Close. And there are the buffers for all of my rivers. If I want a new buffer, and I want to buffer my freshwater or forested wetlands, I can write myself another query. Open that attribute table. Not of that one open the attribute table of wetlands. So right click, open attribute table. And then select by attributes. 
and this defaults to create a new selection. So it's going to deselect what we selected before and create a new selection. So in this case, wetland type equals get unique values, freshwater emergent wetland. Now if we hit apply, we'll see 102 are selected. If we go back to our select by attributes, it still saved our query, but we wanted not just the freshwater emergent, but also the freshwater forested slash shrub. And in this box here, we can use an or statement. So after all of this, place or, just to click, don't type, wetland type equals get unique values double click on that second option. And the structure of this is very, very important, where if you say wetland type equals freshwater emergent wetland or wetland type equals freshwater forested shrub wetland, that's going to work. Apply. So 513 selected. If rather we were to say wetland type equals freshwater emergent or equals freshwater forested shrub, verify that, it will return an error because it needs to know wetland type equals. So it's, it's a very structured way of writing these queries. It's actually called Structured Query Language, or SQL, and it relies on these inputs going in the same way every time. So wetland type equals or wetland type equals. Apply. So those 513 are selected. I'm going to close my attribute table and I'm going to apply a different buffer to those. Geoprocessing buffer, input feature, the wetlands, not the last buffer I made, just the input wetlands. And my linear unit is going to be in feet, and I'm going to apply a 250 foot buffer on that one. And note that I did not use the dissolve all. So that's what happens when you don't use dissolve. I'm going to remove that, right click, remove. Now I'm going to take a shortcut and go to my results tab here open up current session and the last one you did is going to be on top I'm double clicking I'm going to give it a new name two because it doesn't want to overwrite that uh, last file we created and now I can go back and change that dissolve type from none to all and now when I turn that on you can see that it's created just one single buffer where before overlapping things just uh, all bunched together. So you will carry on, use different buffer distances, 250 feet for everything might not make sense, so I'm going to supply you with different buffer distances for each one of these categories, and you're going to create a map that shows the constraints on a forest operation, showing rather than with color, we can make those hollow, or we can make hash lines, so we can in some way demonstrate to the reader that these areas require special attention, maybe a maximum of 40% removal with every operation.